Good happy Wednesday morning, Friday, August 20th, 2021. I'm Riley King. Welcome to this Wednesday morning edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Wednesday morning, so let's begin. But first, let's begin with a check of the weather from meteorologist Mike Haddad. Let's take a look at that right now. Meteorologist Mike Haddad said possible showers and downpours overnight, and let's see what we could expect for the upcoming weekend and for Friday. Here is a full weather forecast from meteorologist Mike Haddad. These are the Joneses. When they decided to look for a bigger house in the area, they knew they needed a local mortgage lender who could move at their pace. At Service Credit Union, we're ready to get you the best terms on your terms. Here for you now and always. Call today. Thank you very much for joining us. Stormwatch 9 weather on the web. Another weekend approaching and we have a lot of weather to talk about between now and the end of the upcoming weekend as the tropics remain active. That means some leftover showers and scattered downpours with the remnants of Fred move through. Major widespread flooding, not a concern anymore, but there could be some ponding on area roadways due to some isolated downpours and scattered showers otherwise. Mostly dry and warmer, not necessarily going to guarantee a lot of sun for Friday. Better shot of partial sun on Saturday and even into Sunday morning. Once we get into Sunday afternoon into Monday, the forecast really depends on the ultimate track of now tropical storm on rain. For tonight, mainly cloudy skies, temperatures will coast back into the upper 60s to around 70. Very humid and the scattered showers and isolated downpour chances will continue through at least midnight 1, 2 a.m. Once this system pulls on out of here, a lot of low clouds linger through the morning. Could be some bright spots in the afternoon. Then partial sun takes over for Saturday with a slight chance of an afternoon thunder shower. For tomorrow, despite a lot of clouds and limited breaks of hazy sun, highs well into the 80s. Again, partial sun on Saturday with a chance of an afternoon thunder shower. And then on Sunday, forecast all dependent on the ultimate track of Tropical Storm Henri as the system moves north. And it's a fairly good bet that it follows this path at least through the early part of Sunday. Beyond then, the forecasts Computer models all over the place from a quick turn out to sea during Sunday night and Monday or track right along the eastern part of Massachusetts up near the New Hampshire coastline. With that sort of track, anything right along the center or just west, we would see the greatest impacts in terms of gusty tropical storm winds and some locally heavy rain. If it tracks a little bit farther out to the east, the wind field stays well offshore and we may get in on occasional showers and the biggest impact would be rough seas just off the New Hampshire coastline. A track a little bit farther inland means we could see more widespread tropical storm force winds with less in the way of widespread heavy rain. So certainly stay tuned to the updates. Many possibilities for later Sunday into Monday. Beyond watching Henri, it turns partly sunny and quite toasty for Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay, and there you go on that weather forecast from meteorologist Mike Haddad. Thank you for that weather forecast, Mike Haddad. New Hampshire marinas warned to protect boats from possible impact from tropical storm Irene. Coast could feel effects from another tropical storm. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Make the most of our short but sweet New England summers by playing hard and relaxing better. Mainly Tubbs says you're in. The remnants of Tropical Storm Fred bringing downpours to the coast. 
In Rye Harbor, whale watches and island tours canceled for the day. Saturday and Sunday trips are on, but all eyes are now on Henri as the storm tracks north with possible impacts Sunday night into Monday. It's great because we have direct access to the ocean, but the ocean also has direct access to us. Um, so we'll end up taking the boats to a safer harbor if it looks like we're going to get a lot of wind or particularly wave action. You know, Rye Harbor is exposed, Hampton Harbor is exposed, Lower Piscataqua River is exposed. Port Authority is keeping professional mariners and vessels updated, but the director's philosophy is the same whether it be giant tanker ship or family pleasure craft. Prepare for the worst and hope for the best. My advice would be is if, if you have a small boat, get it out of the water. I'll go put it someplace where it's going to be protected. Stay informed, um, make a plan, you know what to do, and uh, be aware of your surroundings. New Hampshire Emergency Management monitoring things closely. What's likely to happen, we hope, that um, you may say right turn and goes uh, off the coast. Now, some boat captains telling News 9 that they're used to dealing with the weather and that no matter what Henri brings, the impact should only last for a day or two. We're live in Portsmouth, Jennifer Crompton, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. More than... 2,000 active COVID-19 cases in New Hampshire. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Come see Darla and Hildy at Clark's Bears in Lincoln, New Hampshire. Visit ClarksBears.com to reserve your tickets today. There are more than 2,000 active cases of COVID-19 in New Hampshire for the first time since the start of May. Hospitalizations also back to May levels with 77 people in hospitals right now. There is one new death to report. The fatality rate was held steady at 1% of all cases, but all New Hampshire counties continue to have substantial transmission. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Manchester police search for man after brawl at Red Arrow Diner. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Come see Darla and Hildy at Clark's Bears in Lincoln, New Hampshire. Visit ClarksBears.com to reserve your tickets today. Well, Jen, tonight, the Red Arrow Diner says it is looking into curtailing its hours or even hiring security after that brawl left tables overturned and plates and plexiglass barriers shattered. Now, these men, 19-year-old Griffin O'Neill and 20-year-old Xavier Clement, are charged with felony riot. Police also arrested a 17-year-old juvenile. Police are still looking for 19-year-old Trenton Liggins. If you know where he could be, give police a call. A Red Arrow employee told police the fight started when an argument between two groups of men got physical, then turned into an all-out brawl involving at least 20 people spreading to the rest of the dining area and damaging the restaurant. One of the owners says it is especially disheartening after struggling with worker shortages and COVID-19 protocols for the last 18 months. It's quite disappointing. Um, you know, it's been a struggle. The struggle has been, you know, going on for, you know, what, 18 months now, going up plus that. So we're looking to get back to normal, and this is not our normal. Well, the Red Arrow is now cleaned up and back open. If you have any information about the fight or the man police are looking for, call police or the Manchester Crime Line. Monica Hernandez, WMUR News. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. New Hampshire jobless claim hit pre-pandemic levels, but some industries still suffering. Let's take a listen to that video from WMI War News 9. Come 
see Darla and Hildy at Clark's Bears in Lincoln, New Hampshire. Visit ClarksBears.com to reserve your tickets today. The state's unemployment office says New Hampshire's unemployment claims are headed in the right direction. Over the last two months, we've seen a 75% drop in our unemployment claim volume here in New Hampshire. Uh, a lot of that has to do with reintroducing uh, work search requirements. The state says new weekly claims fell 14% to 525. A survey by the Bureau of Labor Statistics says 10,600 Granite Staters entered the labor force in July, with the private sector adding 7,300 jobs. The hospitality industry, which has struggled greatly during the pandemic, says there's room to grow. Well, I think that it did have uh, some uh, you know, nominal effect, and we did see some folks come into the industry. We did see more applications. We, we're not seeing anywhere near enough to fill the you know tens of thousands of positions that are open across various industries in the state of New Hampshire. Summer says it's for a variety of reasons. Whether that's you know child care might be for for some families, in other instances it may be uh, you know loved ones that have uh, you know compromised immune systems. Businesses are not out of the woods yet. Everyone has their eyes on the impacts of the Delta variant. Pre-pandemic, the state's unemployment program had $300 million in its savings account. After subsidizing it with CARES Act funding, it has $150 million. That's a sizable amount. For those folks that find themselves in a position where their employer closes or a temporary layoff, um, you know, benefits continue to be available for up to 26 weeks. And the state says it continues to host online job fairs and encourages businesses and job candidates to sign up. If you're interested, find this story on the WMUR website or mobile app. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Fatal crash between car and pedestrian under investigation in Manchester. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. see Darla and Hildy at Clark's Bears in Lincoln, New Hampshire. Visit ClarksBears.com to reserve your tickets today. Breaking news in Manchester now. Police on the scene of a fatal accident between a car and a pedestrian. It happened near the intersection of Valley and Union Streets about 8 o'clock tonight. Right now, police say the car did remain at the scene. Traffic being detoured around the area. We are working to get more details, and we'll update you as soon as we know a little bit more. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Three lanes of I-93 North shut down and hooks it after boat comes off trailer. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Make the most of our short but sweet New England summers by playing hard and relaxing better. Mainly Tubbs has your... Staying on top of breaking news in Hooksit. Three right lanes of 93 North are shut down right now because there's a boat in the road. State police say a crash in the area pushed some large DOT barrels into the travel lanes. An SUV towing a boat swerved to avoid those barrels and then jackknifed, causing the boat to detach from the trailer. We are told there are no injuries and a tow truck has just arrived at the scene to remove that boat. State police expect those lanes to reopen soon. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for joining us and watching and tuning in. I hope you all have a great rest of your Friday and a great rest of your day. And I'll see you back here on Monday for another newscast. I'll be off air the rest of the day and this weekend. Thank you for joining us for this Friday morning edition of the Riley King Newscast. Goodbye, everyone.